This week on the Push Ball Life podcast, we've got to talk about dry scooping, informing our practice with foam rollers and possibly exercises you don't use at all anymore. Two, one, we're ready. Just done my dry scooping, Dan. Off we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Four Legs podcast with myself, Damique. And me, Tom Hull. What's going on, bud? What's that like? The whole thing, the whole craze is like stupid, isn't it? What's that all about? I put it as number one to talk about right now, I guess. We're talking about it right now. Unbelievable. Uh, also, just a quick we... question. You know, you, you know, if you if you didn't speak English and you were listening to this, would you like it dubbed or would you like subtitles on it? That's the real question we're asking ourselves here. <laughs> you, can, you can't really have subtitles on an audio show, my friend. Exactly. Exactly my point. <laughs> exactly my point. You'd need it dubbed, wouldn't you, Tom? So therefore, to watch TV as well, it would be a better experience if you're watching it and it was dubbed. Okay. Because so... you don't need to see their lips moving, do you? you don't All need right, to we'll see put a poll that. out. We'll put a poll out. This, uh, this will just decide. Uh, yeah, obviously, Dan's a, a, I don't know, what I call you today? A caveman. Exactly. Um, so... I think we started on the foam rolling shit as well. <laughs> right, okay. No, actually, no, let's talk about this. No, let's talk about this quick because I want to make uh, a very, very distinct thing because I did a video today about fat burning workouts. I didn't know, like, yeah. um, no, that was it. Fat burning zone. The fat burning zone, right? The fat burning now, zone. Now, my biggest issue right here with things like the fat burning zone is that technically, technically, there is one. But it's not what people think, right? And this is my issue with foam rolling. I know, like you, there are certain times where it's beneficial, right? And there's some things it can be good for. The problem is it doesn't do what people think it does. Much right. like the fat burning zone, much like the fat burning zone. If someone said to me, is there one or not? Right. I would say no, because what people think the majority of people that I work with and all that sort of stuff and can help, they think that means that they're burning fat when they do that. And this is my issue with foam rollers. And this is why if someone said to me, you know, you would you use one or not? If you had, you know, every session you either had to use one or you, or you didn't, for every single client you ever worked with, I'd be like, waste of time. Because some people, majority of people, think that it's going to massage their muscles and make them more mobile. It's going to remove scar tissue and it's going to make them like into some sort of person that can do all these amazing Olympic lifts and all this sort of shit. That's what the majority of people actually think because that's how it's sold to them. We know five minutes on there, right, is actually probably for some people going to actually help, right? Like you said on your on your Instagram, desensitization, kind of like getting... Mm. I suppose getting them into the mindset of training, you know, all these sorts of things and so whatever, right? The big, the, I get it. The, the big word there is, is is desensitization. So it's like having like I don't know, you know, you basically you go in your muscle or whatever joint around that thing is could be sensitive or something. That's probably let's let's sensitive because the the knot for the the better. The lack of the better use of like a, what a term is muscle spindles believe it or not don't knot you can't knot your muscle up it no. um, becomes a little bit denser correct but they basically it becomes sensitive because it needs recovery more than anything else so using the foam roller putting pressure on it it desensitizes that area poss- possibly gets blood flow going it possibly gets a little bit of fluid out of it all this kind of stuff so you are able to go and train with less sensitivity basically to that muscle group and able to train harder and probably no. get in better positions no you're wrong tom because uh, i i read that it, <laughs> it, i read that it decreases doms and it, it basically eradicates doms yeah. is what i've read yeah, and it elongates and it elongates muscles so we know i think it, we you're know wrong do that, tom <laughs> i think you're wrong no i think you're wrong tom i think it's i think they're really and you know what i would do actually i'd add some vibration in there because <laughs> actually that's going to be really beneficial because it definitely will that definitely will enhance mobility you can't say it you can't say it doesn't tom oh my god that's my issue with it right is my issue with all these things is it's is it's what the general public think they do. And the general public think that they can foam roll and then not have to do anything and just go and train. And that, that's their warm-up because it's like a massage. No, it's not. No, it's not like a massage. 
Stop being positive. It's like, all right, okay. So, so obviously there's a process when obviously you see the foam roller and then people just go lift. Okay. You don't see the process of we use, well, I'll use a foam roller to they, Dan's literally got one in his hand. I'm saying it because I've got one right here yeah. in my desk. I have so one, right? I'm not that pro- anti them. Obviously, like it was uh, Evie, I believe, asked me this question because obviously, and I got sent this post by uh, one of the lads from my protein that James Smith did about foam rolling. It was like, <laughs> James Smith PT yeah. here. Um, uh, this, you got to straight out. It will do absolutely nothing. <sighs> okay, cool. <laughs> trust, but the, the thing trust. is like it's like the, he the is thing... steering to his market 100 percent. we know exactly that. that's the thing, that's funny. The thing right funny. that's why he's not doing it from a real training point of view and yeah. and i would guarantee if james swift was to look at my session and be like all right but there's there's the process and i'm using it for this i'm not trying to what well, he thinks it possibly let's say james smith is not the most advanced coach i've ever come across i'm not, i put that out there um uh, are you know. sure <laughs> you sure, I'm not going to rely on the fact that he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to take this guy for an athletic based program because that's when I start to use this. And I kind of, I recoil back and be like, I can still put that through for every single person in the population, but I'm going to desensitize certain muscle groups, probably big ones. Then shock horror. I go through some, if we're bad, like bad, it's basically breathing control, motor control, and mobility so that's kind of motor control with but motor control is basically moving a joint in a particular way that you want it to move okay but the foam rolling desensitizes the joint the, and muscle which are around that joint i want to start to use for control and then those are my prerequisites i actually do for like for <laughs> Dan, i make every one of my clients sit on a foam roller for uh, two minutes that's it but just because I, they've Charlatan. got prerequisites. Charlatan, you see that cookie got, cutter, <laughs> cookie cutter <laughs> trainer, right? Because there. every single one of them has a, a sensitive area that I know that, that has this, to right, like, this, chill this out. This is the thing, right? This is the thing, right? <laughs> if you, this is this is why this is right. You're a good trainer, so you have a rationale for what you're doing. You have a rationale for what you're doing. I, I bet you could ask ninety. Out of a hundred people that you're at PTs who use it for their clients, you ask them why are you doing that. 90, 90, I'm gonna say 95 of them actually are gonna be incorrect on what they say. Yeah. And their rationale will be completely wrong. Um rationale will be completely wrong. Not sell, I'm like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent completely wrong. Shit. And, and, and I'm like always like I was literally instructing a new coach today. I was like, the, the words you use are really important here. I yeah. was like, because they're gonna think it's like you say desensitization of muscle. We're getting mm-hmm. ready for moving, possibly, like a little bit better. And we can elicit possibly, possibly short-term mobility, kind of like basically get rid of some restrictions and mobility, range of motion. I was like, possibly. We don't know it for a fact because that person may have a mechanical issue that, that that doesn't allow them to do that. But we could, it could just, because we've desensitized that area and the blood flow has gone possibly a little bit better, then we can go into it but yeah it's just like all right my process is foam roll for like literally two minutes that's all it needs to desensitize like chill out but you can't do it in any other way (laughs) that's the only issue like i can't replicate that what i think through just kind of just mobilizing or doing stretching it doesn't happen um Mm -hmm. so that's why i use it and and just from i'm sorry i've I've delivered over ten thousand hours of coaching that's a fairly big sample size. And I've seen the benefit from not and doing it. Like I would say that the, the, and the benefit outweighs the, the con of wasting those two minutes. Um, yeah. So then it's like, all right, I do that. Then I use motor control and breathing patterns and floor mobility. Then I do standing mobility work. That's just like split squats and all and lateral stuff basically moving mm-hmm. that joint around that I possibly just used and then i go train it's just like all right we still got the process <laughs> that takes one. 10 I've minutes got, it takes 10 I've got minutes another one. that's all it takes i've got i've got another one for you that i've i've done a i've done one of my little twitter things right i've done one of my little twitter things you know how to the thing yeah, yeah. And do you know what's pissed me off is that I started, I don't know what it was, I maybe on my explore page. That's what I do a lot of research, obviously, on my explore page on Instagram because that's how I find shite information. You ready for this one, Tom? You'll love this one. I know you'll go off on this one. Okay. So I read out what I put on camera, actually. Let me read it out exactly what I wrote. Um, because I think you'll, you'll I know you'll agree with this, but I think you'll go off on one. Um, <laughs> here we go. Right. So it I basically put 
Um, there are no muscle activation exercises. If you can stand up, your glutes can activate just fine. You know, I can't, I hate, I can't stand it. I like, look, I think in a previous like beginner PT, I probably said these things. I probably said fire, activate, whatever, right? Now I know better. It's my job to educate people. And I cannot stand it when I see people. And again, it's usually female trainers telling other females. <laughs> This is this is this is how to activate your glutes before you do a glute workout. No, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. You you walked into the gym, your glutes are activated fine. They're just weak. They're just weak. You need to train them and train them hard. And there's no problem there. And it's the whole like firing as well. Oh, they're just not firing. They are firing. You're doing hip <laughs> extension. They're firing. I wouldn't worry about it. Like it's that whole thing of just saying shit. It's just saying shit that sounds good. And it really frustrates me because like you said, now we know better and, and all that sort of stuff. Cause again, I would have said it. I'm sure I would have said it in my very early years. Um, because again, I've been around physios that would have said it again. Sounds good. You trust the physio physios know about this stuff. They know more, all this sort of thing. And as you, <laughs> as you, as you getting more experience and as you kind of listen more and you actually know good physios like Alex, for example, they will tell you that, uh, they, that again, they, last week. Lovely. That they don't yeah. use those words. Right. They, and I, cause I sent it to him and I was like, I'm going to piss some physios off. Aren't I I'm saying this? And he's like, yeah, but none of the good ones. It's like, exactly. <laughs> like, that's the whole point, right? And it's this concept that if you have glutes that aren't firing in air quotes, they're just not strong. They're not yeah. strong. That's the problem. That's why your lower back hurts because your glutes are weak. You are weak, but, probably. Your body so is I, weak. I had this. So, one of my clients, okay. So, obviously, he went to a physio. And then um, he had I a bet little he was bit. Of, went activating. I bet they were yeah, activating. So, and then obviously, like Alex has fortunately moved around the corner to me, so yeah. now has all my referrals. It's brilliant, that isn't it? Um, it's I do that. It's great. I've got I'm clients like, in London. I'm like, oh, thank fuck for that. I know where to send them. Out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. you're going there. Um, and then I actually talk to Alex, so I know what's going on, and he can just ping me a message on WhatsApp. And like, oh, we have a little group together. Yeah. So much better. Shock that the disconnect yeah. between physio and trainer is massive. And I mean, usually what happens is physio, like if they have, like they see one of um, my clients or something, they, they Google me somehow and they look at, look at my credentials and they go, you know what you do? I'm like, mm, well, I'm not a rehabber. I'm a performance-based yeah. coach. I was like, yeah, but <laughs> you, you sound, it looks like you know what we're doing. Like you've, you've got yeah, some good credentials and stuff. I was like, yeah, I'd still want your help just because I would help you if you want to take someone from like, yeah, 40 to 60 mile an hour, you can get them from zero to 40. I need your help doing that bit. Like stupid. Um, but yeah, so he came in. So it's, it wasn't so much of the, I was like, what did he say? He was like, yeah. So I, he said, I haven't got strong glutes. I was like, yeah, brilliant. Um, I was like, but this lad hadn't been training with me for that long, but he come with me the, the purpose to get better at tennis. And he's been training with me for like I don't know, nine months, let's say um two three times a week but i would say if he'd been training with me for that long his glutes probably aren't that weak i probably have made him do some hip extension during the nine months that i've trained him um shot car i have and um yeah i was like all right okay he said that in a bad way and he was like yeah he was like i was like he means that like <laughs> basically the little muscles on the side you are not good at glute abduction i was like hip abduction basically that's weak i could see that for 100 percent. but when you say glutes hip extension and i'm like no you're not weak i was like you're fine you're absolutely fine i was like i can get i can look i know because i haven't done that work with you yet with in terms of adduction and adduction of the hip and i know that's weak on you that was what mm. they should have said is like you're weak doing this way rather than mm -hmm. this way so like, it's just a physio just gone your glutes and you're like that here yeah. does fucking loads of shit like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like we we in the mobility stability model right the hip is in both it needs mobility yeah. and stability believe mm -hmm. it or not so it needs to it, it needs to work con like concentrically and isometrically like there's not many joints that do that none in fact i would argue um so it's like all right the physio if you're a physio that uses this term, look, your glutes don't fire or they're weak or something, get better bedside manner and explain That's the to thing. your client. It's, it's, it is that as well, isn't it? It's the bedside <laughs> manner kind of thing because 
it's that then becomes gospel because enough people have said it. Oh, I went to see a yeah, physio yeah. and they said my glutes weren't firing. Oh, my physio said the same thing about my glutes. And all of a sudden, it's the same like carbs, carbs make you fat, no carbs and four yeah, miles yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Before you, you know, it's that whole thing of like everyone says How it, about, and everyone goes, oh, carbs are bad. I know they're not. About your legs not like, too fantastic moving that way, like a straight yeah. line. Rather yeah. than going you haven't way. strengthened your yeah you haven't strengthened your muscle doing this so do more yeah. of that that's do what they did again that. like with like I said about <laughs> the bands and stuff like if you're doing these movements with a little band and it starts to burn it's like okay okay that's great and it might help you feel it a bit more and you now know where that muscle is my muscle connection and stuff but they don't use these terms it, if you think oh my muscle's not activating it's like no I can get someone really strong glutes doing resistance band work like that and they're still going to burn <laughs> yeah. they're not strong Probably gonna burn like, more because they know where it is and they're all over yeah it. it's like, just that whole yeah. thing of like it's it's that it's almost a graduation that people are physios again like alex is the exact opposite is that they're scared of, of getting people strong of like lifting weights and going no you're just weak like just get stronger whereas like from alex's work you know that you put some under a barbell as soon as they can they're well not barbell necessarily but you know what i mean barbell dumbbell they're lifting load cool, they're doing right? they're doing they're doing movements that are going to get them strong because ultimately we break down and, and, and injure ourselves because we're weak. Yeah. We're weak. Like footballers in their hamstrings, they're weak hamstrings. Yes. There's elements of football that are required to be more eccentric and, and, and lengthened, but I know, and you know, it's because they don't ever fucking train them with any load. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that's the well. reason. Then, yeah. And it's weak hamstrings. That, that used to be the big the thing. Wasn't it? And we're like, Great. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's the same with non, the same... non-hip work, please. Can we do some like direct like <laughs> knee flexion work, please? Nah, yeah, nah, we'll do nah, some nah. let's do some no, nah, let's do some single leg RDLs in the warm-up body weight. That'll be enough. Yeah. That'll just stretch and activate. <laughs> yeah. That'll act that'll activate the hamstrings. That's what they used to say. Um but it's, you see it the same in you see it the same in people that rotator cuff injuries, common rotator cuff injuries in, in people in the gym. Not strong enough. Your shoulder uh, is not strong enough to hold that position. It's nothing to do with the fact they've not been activated or that, you know, doing a warm up like this where you flail your arms around like a chicken, it's not going to do anything, mate. It's not going to do anything because you're not strengthening them. You're not strengthening the, the joint. And it's it's that whole thing for me is it's, it's, it's any injury is just because you're weak and you've put your muscle in a position where it's not strong enough. The weight you're lifting too much and it's gone, fuck you. And it's gone. I'm not doing this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop yeah. you doing it. So I'm gonna tell you you're in pain. That's what it's, it's done. The whole, weak. It's the whole thing, it's right? We 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 discuss this sometimes. It's like what's better in terms of flexibility, mobility, and strength. And like mobility should be the ability to hit your like end range in under control. Thing, and that that is that. in terms of being like weak um, and not being able to control something. So. They're like, oh, yeah, I can get that. But if you can't control it, but I'd rather be stiff and really strong, I think. I don't know. Well, this is the I thing is like, I think, I think with, with those three things, though, Tom, like I would argue that strength and training for strength can get you those other two things. You can get more mobile oh, yeah, and you I'm, get more I'm flexibility. Saying, I'm, saying, I'm but, saying mobility comes from both, is a conjunction yes, yeah. of both. I think, mo- I think mobility is misconstrued as flexibility when flexibility is actually just passive range yeah and, you just and this is the thing is like but but if you're doing strength you would improve both those oh things. yeah yeah like but if you're doing it, flexibility it, it was, you wouldn't so, improve was, your strength you wouldn't so, like you just couldn't so do it funny you know? on the on the cfsc obviously i did a little bit of stuff like coaching and stuff like that even the lads there kevin and um thingy um Can't remember saying? jesus lovely that's time. really nice of you tom brilliant steve yeah. steve thank you okay steve big like Go for it on. Um, yeah, even on that. And I fortunately could uh, do every single motor control flexibility exercise and mobility exercise to its full capacity. I'm like, oh, wow. Like some of the coaches, how do you do that? I was like, I've just strength trained for 10 years solidly. <laughs> That's yeah. it. I was like, I would not say like in terms of like overhead. So, so Stephen, like I said, he's been t- training probably a similar amount of t- time as me. He's, he was like probably delivered about 10,000 sessions. But he was like, I've had four to five people ever like be able to press overhead. That's because my boy has this slightly strange way of like nobody presses overhead kind of thing. And I was like, mm, we could change this very quickly and we can get probably about 20, 30% to press overhead because it's yeah. just bilateral, unilateral argument that I had with him. Um, and then, yeah, I was just like, because you can do the same, right? You're like, get somebody on the floor or get them on the wall and doing a floor angel or a wall angel properly and then uh, get back mm. to me and see how many people can actually go overhead. It's insane. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just I just think it I just think it's that whole thing of like again, it's it's a lot of people trying to really miss um no, they're just trying to complicate a, a very um, and, and they and they lead that's what I was gonna say. It leads to a lot of misunderstanding around what's what's necessary and useful, but there are honestly so many benefits to strength training and being strong. I can't we can't even go into it again, like I just said about mobility, flexibility. Like I'm more flexible and mobile now after all this training. I remember doing the FMS. I remember not being able to get an active straight leg raise up <laughs> straight. Not I couldn't get it straight up like that. Now I can without even trying. Without even trying. Because I'm, I've strength trained. I can squat full range. I can do RDLs full range. I've trained myself in these, these positions. And again, like not only that, but also you see a lot of bodybuilders who aren't mobile, right? So this is the other argument is, oh yeah, but a lot of bodybuilders aren't mobile. No, because they train in one plane of motion and they just yeah. train for their muscles to get, get bigger. That's their function. They don't give a shit about how they move. They don't do reverse lunges. They don't do single leg RDLs. They don't do half these things, Right. And that's the difference maker. That's the thing that will enable you to do all this sort of stuff when you combine it with those movements. Um, and, and I think it's, it's just lost on a lot of people that it's fundamentally to, to move well and all this sort of thing is very, very basic. And a lot of the problems that we face in terms of pain, in terms of injuries, in terms of all these things are usually resolved with being stronger, get stronger in a and, variety uh, of movements. Desensitizing the muscle. And always foam roll. <laughs> don't foam roll first. It's a complete waste of time. But, um, but yeah, like this is the thing is like it's all these little minutiae things though that people pick up on. So like the whole fo- whole foam roller debate, right? That we just had. Uh, it's it's a it's a moot point if you're not training with any intensity through it with any sort of load for any full range of motion. It's but but people focus on that and they go, oh yeah, it's because I'm not foam rolling. That's why so I'm not able to increase my strength. I'm not no, mobile. it's because you're why a pussy. Is, yeah, no, like, why you're not training hard enough. MOBA, why isn't the foam roller making me more mobile? And I'm like, you've got oh. you've got a saw over there, like to cut this bit of wood, but you're gonna carry on with this tiny little knife. Yeah. Like, no, it's just no. That go whole use, thing, go right? use the fucking yeah. tool that's meant for it. Like, go use yeah. strength training. Don't try and look for these answers when you're you're asking the wrong question. Like, the knife is used for cutting food. When you get some food, do that. Um, yeah. that that's what annoys me about the foam roll argument and what James Smith had been spouting around because he's he he for himself is looking at the wrong answer for the question that the foam roller is asking. Like. It's like, mm. all right, fucking hell. Just maybe you, maybe you reload the question somehow. He could, yeah, because because he could have caveated. He could have caveated it and said, um, you know, what does it do for my flexibility, yeah, or yeah. or whatever, you know, the the thing that people think it's. He, for. He could have just know. gone below like, anecdotally. Do you do you feel a little but, bit probably but, better when you come I, off it? I'd also argue though. I, I agree with him to a, to an extent because I'd argue that the people that are going to use it that, that were going to follow him. Again, it is fucking pointless because they don't yeah, know correct. what they're doing. They, they, don't, know they don't know how to desensitize their muscles or all that sort of stuff, but they're not training hard enough. Like that's the reality of the situation. They just don't weight train. They don't push themselves through a four range of motion, all that sort of stuff. So I, I'm inclined to agree. If I had to agree or disagree, and again, I this I've started doing this a lot recently, actually, massive massive um segue is that <laughs> rather than saying it depends, because that's what it does depend on so many things in fitness. I've started thinking about it more from no, for people that I work with, for my niche, I'm going, I give the answer and go, no. And for me, like with that one, foam roller or not, don't worry about it. For my yeah. niche, don't worry about it. Don't fucking worry about it. Go in and train hard. Once you're squatting one and a half your body weight, deadlifting two times body weight, benching your body weight, and you're feeling really, really good, you've noticed huge changes, let's talk. Let's talk once you're there. Don't worry about it until then. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. Not gonna matter. There you go. That's what I've started asking. Lovely. Myself. Big big debate before we got started. Um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll take the foam rolling thing out of my uh, notes because we've we've covered that now. So it Wait, depends. Should we covered it enough depth? Have we covered it enough depth? <laughs> Do you think we need to go a little bit longer on it? I don't know. No. Like I did a post ages ago on it. Go scroll down my feed. Like. I said what it was for, what it's not for. Obviously, I teach it in the PT core because it's good practice. I'm teaching best practice. And for the people that you might need it for, then use it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. If you don't really like it, don't do it. It doesn't matter. That's about, like, we'll talk about this later, is informing practice. I'm not, I'm not telling you exactly what to do. I'm informing you of what you could be doing. Okay, and yeah. you take the nuts and bolts out. What resonates with you? Don't become a Correct. purist. Fuck me. Um, then you get down rabbit holes and echo chambers. Nobody wants to be there. Then um, no, you don't. 
<laughs> All right, we've got a protein bar review. We've obviously Ooh. got to talk about scooping uh, because it's it's insane. Um, it's a, it's the old TikTok 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 o'clock, right. my friend. I'm going to say um, this: if there's a trend and it's on TikTok, it's bullshit because it's on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, yeah, what we what we can do? So I've, I've listed here, and you can come off on the on the fly. Because it was, it's interesting about like obviously the foam roller argument and whether you use it or not. And there was a one in the my protein group, um, and I, I I might write on it in a bit like later tonight because I am a designated because you can do that now. Have you designated people in your um, your groups as a group expert? No. Oh no! So I am a group. There isn't any. In there isn't any in our group. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> group X apparently an expert in uh, the my protein group, but it was um it was a question on rack pulls, um as an oh, exercise yeah. and whether you program them on or do you use them? Like a lot of trainers apparently bash this person for using them. I guess it depends on whatever. A lot of but form police, it? form police hate it. Yeah, a lot of form police um, go for it. So let's uh, basically, I've decided we'll just write down. Um, because in, in light of you going yes or no for my demographic, for the people I speak to and what I believe, yes or no, we'll go down that mm. route. Um, and I've written five, five exercises that you don't program and use anymore that you once did and now you're better. Or you just like, no, fucking for my demographic, these don't really work. So I've written my five, uh, but you can either weigh in on them and say yes or no. But yeah, I'll add some to it. Yeah, I'll add some to it, yeah. I think. So I think that'd be interesting. So stick around. There could be five to 10, depending on how uh, much Dan decides to think. Might be somewhere in the title. Lovely, mate. So we've got protein bar and then we'll uh, we'll just start like snorting them probably. I don't know. Are we doing one or two? No, well, it's, you probably felt left out from last week. Can you taste yet? Yep. Well, some things I can't taste. Any quite things that are acidic. So apples, I've noticed what I eat. Apples and coffee, and there are usually things I eat I can't taste at the moment, and that's really depressing. That's quite depressing. In fact, I can't taste coffee. Fuck me, it's annoying. Right, that this one, is a Snickers, yeah. Snickers protein crisp. Just done that. They've got all the Snickers variations, haven't they? So they've got a crisp. So I don't think it's gonna be very good. I've had a Snickers crisp, and I I was deeply disappointed by Snickers crisp. In, Were you? I quite in, like them. In em. the normal world, yeah, the normal world ones, mm. not the protein world. I was quite saddened, not saddened, but I was just like, Meh, it's a bit boring. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go for. So you got a Snickers one. I'm gonna go for this one then. The uh, bar one block mm. of Krispies fudge brownie crunch bar, which is. Um, I mean, Dan didn't even go for the macros, so nobody knows what he's eating. He could be so basically, this is a 20 grams of protein, 217 calories. It's better than the normal Snickers protein bar. Ooh, that's good. The crisp does add something to it, but mm. it's all right. I, I, it's all right. I'd eat it again. I'd eat that again. So I'm going to keep that for after dinner. I've got dinner soon. I've, I've opened this also, bar one like... What? You did look impressed when you opened it. Um, I, just, I just realized yeah. that I'm going to have a whole new world of protein bars in Dubai. Oh, oh yeah, Jesus. You're going to have to send them home. Yeah. Send them home. Send them to me. Uh, yeah. And I've also got, uh, I'm sure people have had this. I haven't tried it yet. So that's why I want to try it now. Is the Battle Bites glazed donut, glazed sprinkled Ooh. donut. If this doesn't taste like Krispy Kreme, I'm going to be devastated. <laughs> so I've got this 220 calories, 20 grams of protein. It's, I made that, that face because. It's it smells like you know when you open a packet of cocoa pops. Oh yeah, that smell that comes out mm. it smells like that. Oh, and I was okay. like, oh, that's interesting. It's quite intense, right? If you went into a packet of cocoa pops. Yeah. yeah. So what's that another? Is that another one? Two hundred twenty calories, twenty grams of protein, roughly. Again, a pretty standard protein bar numbers. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. Is he impressed or not? That's the real question. All right. Mm. It, All um, right, he says. Nothing to write home about. The crispies aren't crispy enough. No, oh, it's a pain, isn't it? Yeah, no, the crispies in the Snickers were, were crispy, to be fair. I'll give them that. I will give them that. Just the thing I do like bit. about the Battle Bites is that they do come in two different, two two bits. I do like that. Yeah. I've had I've had worse, but I've had better on the bar one. It's definitely better. Sprinkled donut. It's not hard and it's not rock solid like I thought it was going to be. So that's good. And it is basically a lot of like cocoa pops 
mashed together and then some chocolate stuff. Um, so you've got, is that an actual donut or? No. It's a bar. Uh, I'm probably, I'm going to go with something that a lot of people have had it probably as well is the USN trust protein filled cookie. I'm undecided about this. USN filled cookie, 20 gram protein. Wanna bars or whatever. Wanna? Wanna. Looks like a cookie. Smells all right. Doesn't smell like chocolate. No, it's not good, that one. That bites have been. No, it's all right. Again, it's edible. If you force me to eat it, I'd eat it, it's fine. But I expect better. I'm honest. Just like a caramel bar. There you go. Tom looks impressed by his. Mm. It's right. It's not awful. How is it compared I to could... the pancakes? Uh, prefer the pancake. Um, mm. The pancakes are just the the macros are better. These this is two hundred and sixty three calories for twenty grams of protein. Uh, and it needs when it's when you're up there, it needs to be as good as um, yeah. Protein, protein pantry, right? That's that's yeah. a give or take what they're about. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's not. It's it's a good um, like a doughy cookie. It's not a hard cookie, so oh, that's okay. quite nice. Mm. So I'm enjoying that, but it's it's just yeah. It would be better if it wasn't chocolate. It smells a bit weird. Okay, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I don't know what it smells like. My immediate four, and this is really odd. Um, I grew up near farms. And mm. It's not a good smell, then, is it? It's not a good smell. Though, is it? <laughs> yeah, the smell of like the silo being done. If anyone knows that, put in like packaging. That's mm. that's what it smelt like when I opened the packet, and I was like, "That's odd. That's that's odd. Yeah, that's mm. not a good. It's not a great smell." So. I don't know. I keep smelling it. I'm like, maybe it's taking me back. Yeah, um, I'd probably stop it. <laughs> yeah, and it's got mm, no. Now yeah. I've, I've also had Both. the aftertaste for about a minute. Oh, he's not happy about not, that. I'm having to something that you have to wash the aftertaste away. And probably not fantastic. Yeah. Um. What kind of code is that, boy? Vanilla, zero. Vanilla. This is vanilla zero? Yeah. Oh, it's Different a nice cans. packaging. Yeah, yeah that's why I met. I just been saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I think both of those that I had were, were good. Not not like amazing or great, but you know, they're good. They're, they're good. For, if you had a variety box, had those in, you wouldn't be too disappointed, but I wouldn't buy a whole box of them. That's how I kind of gauge it. I wouldn't buy a whole box of them to eat. So we're getting go. to the point of these protein bars now, because obviously we buy we sometimes buy big variety boxes, and there's just ones I don't really want. <laughs> I'm yeah. just like Oh, uh, it's like the, the the I don't know in the celebrations or the miniature heroes. It's like the bounties are left. It's like great. Yeah, okay, I've got to like pick through some bounties right now that I really don't want. Mm. So, it's not great. Every, everybody knows the bounties are left. Apart from, I did have a housemate who loved bounties and was like, "Are you joking?" It's just weird. But I'm like, they're just it's just weird when someone the worst when someone thing loves when someone loves bounties. It's just like a bit weird. I don't mind people who eat them just because they're there or whatever. That's different. If people like love he, them, like, no, he actively, would quite have actively pick quite... them over a teaser's. Yeah, like, no. like no. quite have. I know people who don't really like the teaser, and I'm like, oh, what? It's not like to like. He actively like buys like four pack of bounties and puts them in this like cupboard. Oh you know, no! I, I live with him. No. I was like, that is weird. Didn't realize people no. bought bounties. Oh, gross! Sorry, that's weird. That's weird behavior. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't right. trust that person. No, I don't. Um, former friend. Um, so scooping, Daniel. So the TikTok craze, uh, BBC News, obviously, I think Phil Lerney shared it around, didn't he? He's quite angry, man. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, the doctors alerted the dangerous dry scooping workout trend. Do you want me to resend it to you, Daniel, so you have the, the article? 
Oh, you can do, but I think I saw it, but um, put it in the old chat I'll, box. I'll send it in the old Zoom chat, all right? There we go. So I've got it. I mean, it. it's, 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 again, it's this whole thing of like common sense isn't common, is it? It's just not common. So common let's, let's talk common. us through. So the powder should be mixed with water to make a drink. Shock. Oh, doctors are being warned about a dangerous pre-workout trend called dry scooping that some gym goers are doing. It involves eating powder supplements neat rather than diluting them in water, as recommended by the manufacturers to make the drink. So researchers who are giving a talk at the US Medical Conference are worried young teens may try it, spurred on by a flurry of internet videos of the fad. They scan TikTok, counting the millions of likes. <laughs> Oh dear! So it's like, I think it's, it's, it's just it's just it's just natural selection at work. Let them yeah, do it. That's literally what you just said. You sent to me straight away when I said it let to them, you. Right? Let you them do like, it. Like let them selection. do it. <laughs> if someone does that and they choke to death on it, like then because I've we've we've seen like spoof videos. I think when we we were probably a little bit younger, maybe of like people like doing that with protein powder, right? And then like. Yeah. Like not being able to breathe, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I've or you've done it like I think I don't know whether I've done it like I think I've like as a dare like had a spoonful of uh, instant coffee just to see like what and I'm like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I yeah. think I've done that. It's like the cinnamon yeah. challenge, isn't it? It's like the yeah, cinnamon, yeah, cinnamon challenge. challenge. It's not a good thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I think on this article, aren't they sort of going more into like the whole like, oh, it's bad for like, caffeine. Like, it's bad the caffeine, for the caffeine hit. And, the caffeine dosage. Well, you're going to get that. You're going to drink it. Yeah, you're going to drink it all on <laughs> anyway with water, mate. So fucking up. I think they're but, saying um, that the caffeine dosage would be diluted by the water somehow. And I'm like, you're still, you're still taking on the amount of caffeine. Like, uh, I'm sorry, but like, if that's in the news, we're fucked. If that's the, if that's yeah, making yeah, the news, yeah. right? That was a slow day for the news i think that one <laughs> i'll be honest i just don't get it i'm just like is this really newsworthy is this Maybe really to talk about um <laughs> oh, weird. gaming analyze a hundred videos people use doing it um 30 people dry scooping just don't i don't uh, it's obvious there must be, yeah as they must be doing this as a dare surely that well, is no, what I, I know there are there are online fitness influencers that that before they train will just do the scoop, bit of water, mix it in the mouth and drink it. Like yeah, you know, it's just not an issue. I just don't get it. Like again, it's on the fucking news. And then yeah, I like the the levels of caffeine in these products vary from the equivalent of about one to over three cups of coffee. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Great. Crack on. Do you want to actually know how many milligrams of caffeine for you to have some sort of effect? Yeah. Coming like... from someone who's probably, as they've written the article, had three coffees anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite strange. Like we work out, like what's the what's the dosage per like kilo of milligrams? Between of four coffee? to six milligrams for an ergogenic effect. Between four to six milligrams. Yeah. So that means if you're 80 kilos, you're going to need around 400 milligrams. It's five milligrams per per kilo of to get an ergogenic benefit, which is performance. Yeah, benefit. performance. You'll feel benefit. more alert. You can have 200 milligrams and feel alert, but to actually get an actual performance benefit, it's, it's about it's about up there. Which equates to how many cups of coffee, Daniel? When it's probably oh. it's about 80 to 100 ish per cup of coffee. Yeah, it's about four cups. I think something like that. Yeah, three, four, four cups to get that. So yeah, quite a lot. And people was like astounded that I have three coffees a day, like that. And I'm like, yeah, it's about normal for me. Like, bear in mind, I'm up at six, so yeah, <laughs> I've got to somehow fuel myself throughout the day with some sort of stimulant, and I get a little bit like, ooh. But I, there is sometimes some circumstances I don't. I only have like one or two, and I'm like, oh, I'll have a tea, lovely. Um, okay. But yeah, oh, it's interesting. Basically, if you're listening to the podcast, you realise you're not going to be dry scooping. But we thought we'd highlight it to you anyway, because um, there are idiots that are doing it. If you know somebody who's dry scooping, then let us know. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Unbelievable. Oh, it's unbelievable. We know that. Oh, uh, yeah. Get, stop them dry scooping. Start them foam rolling. Again, um, like I said, it's on it's on TikTok. Do you know what I mean? That says everything. If you're on TikTok yeah. and you're doing it and watching that shit, then I mean, if you're influenced by that, then that's uh, that's on you. I think. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we're going to go into it. Okay, so this is just from a bout of like, like I said, I reckon between me and you, Dan, we've been coaching humans to physically move for about, what we, over, what we like, 20, 25 years now combined. So there are, it, yeah. our, our practices have changed. That is not each, FYI. Let's, let's divide it into. Um, <laughs> There will be a, a point where we might be there. Um, but yeah, so there will be changes in our practice, 100% with it, throughout that whole like uh, modalities and different things you've been doing and how you've been doing. But right now, I would I would say since pre-COVID, let's say that it's a good span of time and we've probably written some programs in that time, exercises that you don't particularly, so you haven't really programmed from then to now and you've taken out of your programs that you no longer see a benefit for for your clientele so i'll go right in there because it, it didn't irk me with that post that was in the my protein and i i will make a comment just because everybody else is agreeing with her and i'm gonna go and disagree um and being the resident group expert it's gonna be annoying um <laughs> rack pulls i have not programmed rack pulls since I do not work with powerlifters anymore. Mm. Full stop. Okay. So if you're listening to this, I can't remember your name. Uh, maybe it, it might, this podcast tends to get around the My Protein group. Um, so the reason being, right, so a rack pull, first of all, prob- so the two clients she was using, like one person, uh, there was a 70 year old lad who was grad. They, she was gradually getting the person closer to the floor. I think that was what they mm. were doing. Okay. So a rack pull is a hinge. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. If you want to make a hip hinge, they don't have to segregate the hinge from knee flexion. Just to put it out there. You can just squat the person. Absolutely fine. And you can single leg hinge the person in some sort of B stance or probably a bridge position. If they, I, I don't, I don't like that. Uh, the whole, I'm getting them low to the floor. Just do RDLs. Just, just yeah. do that movement. Just do RDLs and go. Don't you don't need? Fine. Yeah. Um, it's like bringing the floor to them, all that kind of thing. And number two, yeah. um, did the trap bar go missing? Why, why are you mm. using, why are you using the rack? Um, space for I'm, I'm like, all right, I'm not probably don't need, don't need a rack for this or like block pulls or something like that. Block pulls have their place for powerlifters. And then again, I don't really understand it because sometimes I didn't, I put them in sometimes, but I was an idiot. Um, it's the strongest part of anybody's lift. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's how the strength I think, curve I goes. Think, I think the thing, the thing with them, the thing that I, I, I think is, is frustrating when I see that is it's, there's no, there's no stretch and shorten for a full range of any muscle group. You know, if it was no. like, you know, you know, if you did a rack pull and, and your back was like fully stretched out, I'd be like, okay, cool. I can understand why you want to do that. And I, and to a certain degree, there's a lot of bodybuilders that kind of use it at some of the high levels because they want to um, build a dense upper back, thick, dense upper back. back. And the thing, the thing is that they always combine it with their lap pull downs, their rows, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it's like, well, yeah. Is it that, or or is it the rows and the lap pull downs? Um, <laughs> it's it's definitely like like you. I agree with you. Like I've had people before who wanted you know powerlifters and stuff like that and all this sort of thing. And there's an element to that you could argue that if the rack pull is from a low enough position, it's almost like getting them prepared to be able to lift that off the floor because they're used to holding the weight and gripping it and all that sort of stuff. I don't think that's a valid argument like uh, no. in the long term, but I think it's, it's, it's at least there's a tiny bit of rationale to it rather than just like that one, which is, Oh, I want them to get them closer to the floor. It's like, no, there's other ways of doing that. Like uh, in my opinion, it's um, just, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't no, do it. I'm so, like, all right. I, I wouldn't just, I just, I, if you're at most of the gyms now, I would like say probably have a kettlebell that's fucking pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to spend a hell of a lot of time. Guess what? Nobody, we know nobody needs to use a barbell. Nobody, apart from powerlifters and ollie lifters. And the barbell is a fairly inflexible piece of equipment. So it does not move around your body. So the kettlebell it can, you can literally put it right in the middle of you and you might get more range and you yeah. turn that into a little more of a quaddy, squatty kind of deadlift, which is absolutely fine. You can still hit terminal hip extension and bring them slightly, use a rebox step and you bring it slightly closer. And I'm like, I'm going to guess this person who is using rack pulls at the age of 70 
can they deadlift or block deadlift like slightly mm -hmm. high end the heaviest kettlebells in the gym two kettlebell deadlift can they do that then they've got no business doing rack pulls i don't understand oh mm -hmm. so yeah there no, are i agree better it's, things i wouldn't to do so i have not uh i have not programmed rack pulls and i would say uh, there are better uses of my time to get to the achieved oh. goal which is what perceived so I'll add in mine as well. Um, okay, so that's this, my which one. You, which you one. may, which you may already go, have. Go it's kind of, it's, it's kind of similar. Is the barbell bent over row? That is one. That is number. Yes. That, so number there one was rack pull. Just, my number three was the barbell bent over row. Yeah. Just a waste again. Like the amount of the amount of lower back um, strain and stuff like that you're putting on there for 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 a movement that you could do any other way, even if you did it <laughs> knee supported. Even if you did it knee supported with one arm. There's less, a lot less strain in your lower back. Again, a lot of people, their lower backs can't take huge amounts of load anyway. I'd rather deadlifted if they're going to put lower back under any sort of strain. I'd rather use it for that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, machine rows, cable rows, this that pulled out. There's so many other better ways to train your back than doing bar bent over rows. Um, it's, and yeah, it's the, it's yeah. The, it's, and like it's you said, the, the range is also of... inflexible. It's the it's the way it's done and the look of it. I'm like, nah, just just sack that off completely. Just don't, yeah, don't and it's it. like, all right, well, we can do better things, like a, like a T-bar landmine row kind of thing. That's fine because it's got that support yeah. that you're rowing back into. You still, but and you're still. If the the only argument for me for the bent over row is to get somebody isometrically hinging. That's yeah. if that is important to you for some weird reason. <laughs> I don't really care um, to build. Would be a probably, weird reason. To like the only rationale is for erector stability okay you want isometric spinal erector stability that in my mm -hmm. eyes is what the bent over row does and it's combining it with a row the bent over row sits in the same category as me for an isometric contraction around the core and spinal column right just like i would do bird dog rows just like i do like um what the fucking i did today um side plank rows on a cable that kind of stuff and then like normal plank rows, like overhead. Cool, it sits there because it's an erect spine and like spinal in, like injury, uh, injury waiting to happen, but row under a little bit of load and they just look like shit most of the mm -hmm. time. And it's super hard because it's a barbell straight away. <laughs> People do them yep. really upright and you're like, no, 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 no. Reach terminal hip extension, okay? <laughs> with a little soft knee and your hamstrings should be fucking singing. Like they should be yeah. on to hell. Like most girls can reach, that won't need to reach terminal hip extension before they hit horizontal, basically. That's the unfortunate scenario for them because they don't probably need it. Um, and they can train their back. But if you're training it for your back, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like that is not getting you a better back whatsoever. <laughs> it's yeah. a weird weird one all right so i got so that was that was one of your ones mm. all right so again unfortunately the barbell gets slagged off here so much um but the barbell it's i use barbells it's fine i get i use barbells absolutely fine but it's just knowing when to and for i'm saying for our my demographic that i train i tend not to use a barbell overhead press so i am talking bilateral barbell overlay and press i tend not yeah. to use them um it is like i said the biggest uh, area of it's a red flagging for mo like the general population so in boils stephen briglow has only ever done four or five people have managed to overhead press in his life like that's how harsh they are on clearing people to overhead press um yeah. does not mean that is normal i would say 20% of the population probably can overhead press properly to a good ability. And then the, most of them should be sticking with landmine pressing. Um, and maybe we look at more incliney kind of pressing more than anything else. Other than yeah. that. I think, yeah. I think my clients must get pissed off at me because when I program shoulder press, it's only ever usually anyway half kneeling position single arm correct and they get through their next plan and then i'm like yeah that's what we can do again or that i sometimes give them a standing single arm variation because it's a little bit different but the same sort of thing um but i agree yeah, i don't do barbell i don't even think i've got it as an option on my on my spreadsheet to be able to pick yeah. i don't even so, don't even do that it's just the yeah. reason why the barbell does not move around the head the head has to move around the barbell and the barbell yeah. doesn't move with the shoulders very well because you're in a fixed position so 
believe it or not, when you're in a fixed position, whatever happens at your wrist does correlate to what happens at your shoulder. And the fixed mm. position, your shoulder goes, mm, this, I don't really like this that much. So again, mm. I'm speaking from like strong men, powerlifters tend to do them because they need to tax out their anterior delt quite a lot for bench pressing. Um, and then like mm. a strong men and ollie lifters, absolutely fine, cool. Because they have to go overhead for their sport with a barbell. That's the, literally the only population. So I tend to use kettlebells and dumbbells and landmines thousand percent there I've got so you one. can play around but i've started doing because i was getting bored of myself programming single arm kneeling and stuff so i started doing this guy like the old okay, cool. yeah like i'm gonna write that one one now my time. clients my clients are like, <laughs> fucking hell, I'm gonna write now. listen to this yeah so That's yeah it. old old turner overhead pressing it's pretty taxing but i'm like shit and yeah, when like anything that. you do all turn obviously it takes a fucking age you like yeah. eight reps each side. You can't get gassed Fucking out. No, you gas because it's you don't get the little rest from switching from side to side. My you clients know. hate the no. um. They they hate my clients hate the Z press as well. All of them hate the Z, Z, press. Z press. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I love press. a Z press. I do yeah, like a Z yeah. press because because I'm like all of a sudden like I can't lift as heavy as I used to. I'm like ah You're yeah because like, yeah, you yeah. back before me. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, back. Um, I've got another one. I've got another one, Tom. I've got another one. Um, it may be on here. It may not be. Just a bog standard for time plank. Interesting. I've not got that written down. But we'll so that as I don't, as, as, an, as an online coach, I don't trust my clients enough. Sorry, clients. To do a plank properly. <laughs> no, um, like no chance. I would do, I would, if I was in person with people, I'd be doing RKC planks for fun with a lot of people yeah. for fun. I do not trust a single one of my clients to do it with the intensity required in a position required. I think there's better alternatives. So I would do, I sometimes do normal planks, but with like arm reaches or things like that, where they kind of require some sort of stability in the movement and it's going to get them thinking, but never just uh, on your elbows, looking at your timer. Like I just don't, I don't program it because I think, I know Ben Bruno does it, doesn't he? He does the whole, if you're on your phone for longer than a minute, you have to be in a plank position. Yeah, and stuff. you have to be in a plank position. And I, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I kind of think, yeah, it's kind of a bit funny and it's obviously a bit more of a thing, a, a jokey thing. I do side planks to, to be fair. They're okay. I'm a bit more okay with those because again, a bit more taxing, all that sort of stuff. But I just think the normal plank, people just butcher it so much with their lower back and what the how they do it and stuff like that. Um, I just yeah. don't program it. I don't program. It. I think there's better core exercises to do. I think we've evolved, you know, from the plank. Um, so to be honest. I, I, I would concur. I do program them still. Um, they do sit in a place, but they're usually in conjunction with some other stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm in person. So I can get somebody to fucking tilt their pelvis underneath and like yeah. properly tuck up. I can rock them around. Shake them, move them. The yeah. So if yeah. anybody doesn't know, like how to actually set up a plank is not just get in that position. It's like you get in the kind of, basically your elbow needs to be directly underneath your shoulder. You're in your like forearm position, but you have not lifted your, like you get your feet in your position, but your knees are on the floor. And you basically, you dig your feet hard, hard, hard into the ground. You tuck under your pelvis as hard and hip extend as hard as you fucking can. And then mm -hmm. you basically breathe out really hard, lift up, and then drag your elbows as if they're going to drag the, everything in the floor in between you and your feet together. Imagine you've got a piece of paper and you're scrunching it up by pushing your hands together. That's how it should feel like. And if you are not shaking within five to 10 seconds, doing it wrong. Indeed. <laughs> uh, all right. This one, backwards and forwards, playing, playing exercises we don't use anymore, tennis. Um, so this one's a weird one, actually. And I don't, I don't honestly know why I've gone away from it so much. And I, and I had to double check myself, and I haven't programmed this for an incredibly long time, is a face pull. Okay. And this one's a controversial one because it's not a bad exercise. It's not something that you definitely go, well, that's a pile of shit. Um, mm. And I would, I may have a problem with doing it for online clients because this might be, an, again, another trust issue. And maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's the standing face boy I don't like that much. I prefer the half mm. kneeling position always mm -hmm. because guess what? When people are in half kneeling, their pelvis doesn't fly fucking around. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not too sure. I think I know why I don't do it as much anymore because I've gone away from um, limiting thoracic 
uh, rotation as much. And I've, I've allowed thoracic rotation to happen more during maybe single arm pulling movements. And I think that's important. Um, and I tend to do like more single arm cable rows in different positions instead of, I think it's the bilateral nature of it. And mm. that, and more the, the fucking annoying, and I've said it when I was a, like a younger trainer is imagine pincing a pencil between your shoulder blades. Don't do that because your shoulders go in the wrong place. Like you want them down, yeah. put them down. <laughs> Don't pinch yeah. a pencil because you know what that is. It's just like your shoulder blades crushing the muscle together and it, that's, that's just going to be sore and annoying and fairly dysfunctional because you have to raise. So they want to go down. Shoulder blades are built to go down. Um, yeah. Face pulls down. Weird one. Yeah, I, I still program them, but I agree with you. The more I think about it, the more I think actually uh, my client's doing it properly. I want them to. Probably not. Like, not. <laughs> um, like so, so face, face, pulls, right, but... face pulls when you're doing in standing in a bilateral stance, not a kind of a kickstand or a B stance, I'd normally yeah. done wrong. I'd normally done with way too much kind of yank kind of thing, yeah. right? That's my issue with it, I feel. I'm scared. Yeah, of that I don't happening. know. I, I, I don't know if you'd think the same about band pull aparts and that whole thing. Again, I, I find it with band pull aparts, it's easier to keep your shoulders down. Because yeah. I, the way I sort of say, say to people with their band pull aparts is keep the keep the band sort of below your nipple line. And all yeah, of a sudden, yeah, I, it's much easier for them to kind of hold that shoulders down position than if they're up. They're kind of, kind of doing a similar movement, but you know their shoulders will be up in a face, but I guarantee yeah, the majority of my clients to. will be. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where I, I would I would change that and, and have changed that before with people. Um, but I agree with you. I think it's that. But then I also wouldn't trust them to do a single arm, like higher row as much. I, I, yeah, it's a bit of an odd one, isn't it, with that? I think um, it's because I do it with like a step and I, I'm increasing rotation sometimes to happen. And then I've got yeah. the anti-rotational shit in there. So I'm like, why am I yeah. doing another pull, which is against rotation, when a pull essentially enables me to have more thoracic rotation. So I'm using it. I usually use like a pulling exercise in my, in really, I'm picking the pulling exercise based off, does it T-spine rotate or doesn't it? I don't really use it as like, this is my pull exercise the way I look at mm. programming. I'm like, all right, do I want to limit rotation or do I enhance rotation? What is my goal of this pull? Because essentially mm. when we pull things, that's what we've got to do unilaterally. We've got to limit rotation somehow. Like, yeah. Weird how it evolves. Probably I was always thinking about, oh, it's just a row of some sort and I'm really training my back. And now I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm looking at T-spine rotation because that's probably what is way more important for this person or most of the population because they don't tend to move like this. And it's probably one of the most uncomfortable positions to be is locked up in your T-spine. It is built to move lots. Um, mm. Yeah. Was that me or was that you? That was me. That was, it's you next to me. Um, Anything else? I haven't, I can't remember. I don't know if I have or not. I, I may have done, but I do steer away from it as much as possible because there's far better options. It's just like a barbell curl, just like a straight bar curl. Like, again, I know you wouldn't do that for many of your clients anyway, but there's actually hey. a, a lot more, <laughs> a lot more, there's a lot more benefit, for example, to doing like incline seated where your biceps in a stretch position or cable where it's in a stretch position, single arm stuff and allowing you focus more. Whereas with the barbell, you do get a bit more swinging, a bit more shoulder involved. People go too heavy because they can hold it and their shoulders help out a little bit. Whereas when you go single arm, all of a sudden yeah. it's like, I can't lift it out. It's heavy. I have to think about the movement. So I've naturally just not programmed quite as much of them. I think it's probably the, one of the main ones. Mm. that's fair i don't program a lot of barbell curls ever um I don't yeah. really program i thought you doing your in, in your, your training anyway <laughs> but, uh, i don't program a lot yeah. of curls if i'm really honest um i allow curls usually in my conditioning so it will be a yeah a plus thing i'll be like you're allowed to do your tricep and your bicep extensions or whatever you can, you can bicep extend if you really want to might do, won't do much um but yeah, I kind of just allow it. I'm like, yeah, you can do that whilst you're resting from doing your assault bike 10 second like yeah. killers or stuff like that. Yeah, it's a weird one. Because not a lot of people come to me and go, I really want Jack to try like biceps and triceps, Tom. Like I, this is what I really like want to me. So I have one yeah. lady who uh, is just like 
yeah, I have to put in extra glute work and extra like bicep and tricep work. Cause she's like, I want really cool arms and really cool glutes. And I'm like, all right, I'll give you that, but you're doing the rest of my shit. Okay. I'm making you a functioning mm. human because you've got two children to keep up with. Um, yeah. yeah. And if you turn around and be like, I'm so tired because I can't chase my kids anymore. I'm like, then I'm going to get it in the neck. All right. So my last one, and again, this is controversial because I know you, I know you use it frequently Ooh. and this this is a a, uh, a this is directly correlated to probably in person and the methodology i use against and i definitely would use it but it's just the clientele i have currently and for the last two years i haven't had to and you know mm-hmm. i use it is a leg press oh yeah that's that's again like you said that's just bang for your book in person training and if i was in person i probably wouldn't it's more a case of it's for an online coach it's probably a little bit more like actually i know that that's one thing you can do without me being there quite comfortably and probably push hard and all those sorts of things um so yeah i, I completely get where you're coming from with that yeah, yeah. so there's a weird one because it's just like i know i've i've definitely used it in person before but it's usually to blitz a muscle group or to end or because mm. there's a i'm probably doing unilateral lifting or something like that um or i'm looking after a person's back quite particularly or stuff like that. It's just the the issue with the leg press, no matter which you can have the best leg presses and built them in the world, like hack squat, whatever's all this bullshit. It's just the range. It's just the range of the squat. And I'm like, uh, for my time, and I want to be able to let this human kind of function outside of here. If they can't function on leg press for the best of my like deep thinking about it i just i just know it doesn't correlate particularly well into squatting and stuff obviously mm-hmm. there's strength that carries over a certain minute but like from a proprioceptive point of view it's just like yeah it's not going it's not it's not happening for me i just can't get my yeah. head around that i can't do it no yeah unfortunately all right last one mate you got one more is there uh... anything else or you're like nope I've programmed every single exercise I've ever done for the last uh, 18 months now. I think, what else is there? Um, <laughs> That's it. We covered all the exercises, seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because no, you haven't programmed, I can think of. Because, you, because you probably haven't programmed them. You're like, oh, I don't yeah. really know. What, uh, what, what would not yeah. resonate in my, in my head? Or like you maybe look at some people and go, actually, I don't do that very often anymore or stuff like that. No. Yeah, there's not. I can't think of anything. Uh, obviously, but nice. There's seven. Who we'll put up mm. that? I think that's interesting. I'll make a little post about that. I think stuff that we don't use anymore um, during the week and get absolute trolled. They'll be like, "What Tom? You don't do that? Oh my God!" <laughs> like, All right, cool. Good argument. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, real good. Yeah. Well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any other business, Daniel? Strong episode. Not from me. Oh. Not from me. He's Dan's no, no COVID. He's strong. He's full of protein. Free. COVID free. He's allowed out of his room. It is great. He's still in his room voluntarily. So yeah, Laura came, <laughs> Shot left Laura it. messaged me. Was like, yeah, he's, it's been great since he's been in there. So yeah, you come round. The ha- not in the house anymore. The only thing is lacking That's is nice. cooking. I bet she didn't like it because you couldn't cook for her. Yeah, definitely. I reckon. I reckon that was definitely a thing. It was like, oh, we can let him out at dinner time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I bet Is I bet Isabel wanted that more than anybody else. Actually, Laura think, could probably yeah. get away with it because she's like, I'm, I was used to eating like this for thirty years before eating I met ham you. sandwiches. Um, it, <laughs> and then Isabel's Fine. like. I remember what vegetables look like. Oh, good. That's it. <laughs> Unbelievable. That poor girl. Lovely. That's why she was uh, so happy when I came out. This one was the happiest when I came out, I think. And that's probably why I bet. just nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> no more just like eating, I don't know, what are they? I don't know, lunch of derily lunchables and just be like, there's your dinner. What? Yeah, that was probably it. <laughs> <you're right>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a dream. All right. Um, no other business from me. Obviously, go listen to our other shows, I guess. License and Banner, always always, always there. Um, PT Collective Podcast. Myself and Luke have just recorded a batch, so they'll be coming in your ear holes every Wednesday. 
That's um, good. There you go. Yeah. Um, there's nothing else for me other than um, I'm taking on clients at the moment. So if anyone does want to lose weight, they do want to gain muscle and they want to absolutely smash their training from here on in and not have to do planks, then here I am <laughs> if you need me. Um, but yeah, just let just let people know if they're listening. Long time listener. If you've been sat there, long time listener, thinking, oh, I probably should, maybe I should, should uh, I? Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, that's what it's the just, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just message me. Just reach out. Let's have a chat and see if I can help. See what your goals are. There you go. Easy. Wonderful. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll catch you, catch you later. later.